And since most of the Muslims did not understand Arabic as a language, and we are non-Arabs, so there are high chances that our mind will wander. To prevent our mind from wandering, besides reciting the Arabic text, we should simultaneously recall the meaning of what we are reciting in the language we understand the best. Whether it be in English, whether it be in Hindi, whether it be in Marathi, whether it be in Gujarati. You should recall the meaning of what you are reciting in the language we understand the best. For example, if you recite Surah Fatiha, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the most gracious, most merciful. Maliki yawmiddin, the master, the king of the day of judgment. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een, thee alone we worship and thee alone we ask for help. Ihdina surat al-mustaqeem, guide us to a straight path. Surat al-ladheena an'amta alayhim, the path of those whom you are pleased with. غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَضَّالِّينَ not the path of those who deserve your anger, nor of those who have gone astray. So, when you are reciting the Arabic text, you should simultaneously recall the meaning of what you are reciting. Then, inshallah, your mind will not wander. But after a few weeks or a few months, even this will become mechanical. Because our mind it is so powerful. So a portion of your mind is used in recalling the Arabic text and the other is used in recalling the meaning. So even this will become mechanical. But there are less chances that your mind will wander, but yet your mind may wander. So to prevent this, besides recalling the meaning, you should concentrate, you should ponder on what you are reciting because a human mind, it cannot concentrate 100% on two things either 50% on two different things or 80%, 20% on two different things. A human mind cannot concentrate 100% on two things. Besides recalling the meaning, we should concentrate on what we are reciting. Then inshallah, our mind will not wander. I started my talk with the quotation from the Glorious Quran from Surah an Kabut, chapter number 29, verse number 45. Utlu ma uhiya ilayka min al-kitab wa aqim as-salah inna salat tanha anil fahshay wal munkar. Recite from the book what is revealed to thee and establish prayer, indeed prayer restrained from shameful and unjust deeds. So in Salah, we are being programmed towards righteousness that we have to stay away from shameful and unjust deeds. So Salah keeps us away from many evils. And for example, if the Imam after Surah Fatiha, he recites Surah Maida chapter number 5, verse number 19. Ya ayyuhu alladheena amanu, O you who believe, innama al-khamru wal-maysiru, most certainly intoxicants and gambling, wal-ansab wal-azlam, dedication of stones, divination of arrows, ritsum min amal al-shaytan, are an abomination from Satan's handiwork. Fajtanibuhu la'allukum tuflihoon. Then abstain from such abomination that ye may prosper. In Salah, we are being programmed towards righteousness. That alcohol is prohibited. Gambling is prohibited. Fortune telling is prohibited. We are being programmed towards righteousness. And if the Imam after Surah Fatiha, he recites Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 3. حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُ الْمَيْتَ تُوَدَّمُ وَلَحْمُ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَمَا أُهِلَّ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ بِهِ Forbidden for your food are dead meat, blood, flesh of swine, and any food on which any other name besides Allah's name has been taken. These four types of foods, they are prohibited for us Muslims. So in Salah, we are being programmed towards righteousness. That dead meat, blood, flesh of swine, and any food on which any other name besides Allah's name has been taken, these foods, they are prohibited for us. And if the Imam, for example, after Surah Fatiha, he recites Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 23 and 24. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ إِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحْدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفِّ وَلَا تَنْحَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي صَغِيرًا And the Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him and to be kind to your parents, whether one or both of them attain old age. Say not a word of contempt. 
nor rebel them, but address them in terms of honor. And lower to them the wings of humility, and say, my Lord, have mercy on them, even as they cherish me in childhood. So we are being programmed towards righteousness in our salah. That we have to be kind to our parents, we have to respect our parents. And if one or both of them attain old age, we cannot even say oof to our parents. We can't disrespect our parents. In Salah, we are being programmed towards righteousness.